I am about to be sick, but not quite yet. Right now, we're a bit homesick for Mintello, which we are leaving behind. Carlos is actually lovesick at this moment. We left late in the day and night was upon us quickly. A moonless night, but a brightly lit sea by this unidentified floating object. The water below was glowing very naturally in a huge area. Anyone have any idea what it is? It's floating. We seemed to be all very tired. My shift was from early evening to past midnight. Then I slumbered heavily. I dreamt of blue glowing dolphins streaking by in bioluminescent ultraviolet blue. They attacked the boat like glowing blue missiles only to pass quickly below and streak by the side of Galifan. I was awestruck. It was no dream. It is one of the miracles of the sea. A phenomenon of the blue black desert abyss. Hallucinogenic yet real. A natural high like no other. I was alone to see it. Carlos was fast asleep in his own dreams of natural beauties and Natasha stumbled out of her slumber just too late to see what was so surreal. day ahead of us, but a comfortable one. We hoisted full sails at departure and took one reef for the night. Conditions were as predicted. Just a little more wind on the nose than we'd like. But for Cape Verdean weather, this was heavenly. And sailors never comment or complain on the weather. It's a bad omen. We slowly opened up more Genoa to coast along the gentle swell. We turned off all the dance Cape Verdean music. It made us reminiscent of the great dancing fun we had back in Mindelo, and kind of sad. So Carlos switched to a river of melancholic pop rock hits that reflected his feelings for a beautiful woman he left behind. He knew all the words by heart and could feel the sting of the poeticism in his heart. The open ocean is a place where many things can go on within. The lover can look behind and feel sad and remorse. The adventurer can look ahead for fame and fortune. And the sailor stays in a moment, adjusting to wind and waves. There was not much to distract us from our thoughts. The music was lamenting broken hearts. The weather was calm and easily manageable. In a conversation was a mix of feelings of love and the feelings of wind in the sails. It was also time to rest the abused body of too much liquor, good food, and girls. I was in absolute confidence of Carlos. He's been a fascinating personality of my voyage this past few months. He has a rare confidence backed by strength of knowledge and experience. He has been a booster shot of self-confidence for me, something that should have been prescribed to me many years ago. His 
knowledge of society and psychology is keen, smart and decisive. He's know-how of the sea and wind is sleek, smart and advantageous to boat and crew. And as well, he's a sensitive guy with a very generous heart and a very good sense of humor to boot. In a way, he's been me and Nat's superhero for the past few months. Working, you know, sailing works. <laughs> That's the way. That's the way you, you gotta work, you know? That's how we work in the desert. And I... Working, you know? We arrived in Terrafal in the evening. I don't like to dock or anchor at night, but with my boosted self-confidence and knowledge of the bay, I kept in the boat to a safe anchorage. Carlos had admitted that anchoring was not where he was most confident. I knew where we were and remembered where the rocks were. The swell was big, so we anchored further out and let out almost all of my 45 meters of chain. In the morning, we had a clear view of the swell and had chosen wisely our spot. The chain did not drag or snag on rocks below. We ate and slept, and in the morning bathed and got fixed up for shore. Carlos will be going to Praia to rent an apartment for a couple of months. He'll settle there until he figures out his next move. He's owned several businesses back home in the Canaries, sold them to go sailing, and now his story is but a blank page waiting to be written. As for me, another story would unfold. Well, we're here in Terrafal de Santiago. We dropped off Carlos, who went off to Praia. That same day, I went to the police station to uh, get my papers and do the entry uh, procedure. And they said, oh, we can't do it today. It's a bit too late. Can you come back on Monday? Well, today is Tuesday. And what happened, and past couple days is I got like sick with something I don't know what it is but feeling a little bit better today but I was incredibly tired and just puked my guts out just cannot hold anything down I still haven't eaten in the past I'd say maybe 48 hours anything I would try to ingest just immediately would end up throwing it up really weird my whole body's been aching and everything and I don't know what's happened I think if I could give this any kind of rational explanation is I think it was a bit too much of the good times, too much partying, too much dancing back in Mindelo. And it caught up with my uh, my old rusted bones and uh, my weary body, I guess. And uh, I just needed to just lay down for the past 48 hours. I mean, I just slept and slept and slept. And, and the good thing about it is I did finish my book my trilogy of the Mutiny and the Bounty, which I recommend highly for any sailor or anyone. It's just an amazing book. Amazing, amazing book and based on the true story. And the, the last bit when they end up on Pitcairn Island and have to survive, it's just astonishing. I don't know, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. And it's um, inspired me to maybe start writing myself. And since I was stuck here and also ran out of credit for my phone card couldn't go on the internet or do anything like that I uh, started writing and it's been kind of fun so I have to say in all this that Natasha was extremely extremely kind to give me a full body rub because my body was just aching everywhere my muscles everywhere from my ribs to my legs and everything and she was very kind to, to care for me and give me some kind of voodoo black woman magic woman kind of stuff to eat and it was pretty disgusting. <laughs> right now I feel like the only thing I could swallow is a bit of a cup of tea today and it was pretty good and uh, I think some fresh air and some walking around will maybe do me some good and uh, I'll quit complaining about it but that's the dark side of traveling 
you know, and sailing. I guess, you know, you do succumb to whatever virus or bug or might be, you know, around in the, in the country that you visit. There is a dark side to dancing and partying and drinking too much grog and hanging out with too many girls and an old man's body needs to recover at some point. And it will, because, you know, there's more fun to be had and there's more places to discover and which we will do around this island in the next few weeks. My body seemed to just have caved in and slapped me down hard to rest and cleanse. And now I have somewhat recovered. The real recovery will come when I can down a few grogs and dance all night, as well as slobber street food and cachupa. Right now, I'm happy I can steer my dinghy from the beach back to Galapa and finish this episode. As for our future, it's also waiting to be written. Mi alma se desborda de emoción